Hello, my Juicy Co creators. Lilu here. I'm in Holland today in Van Hai. Is that right? That's, a good, that's great. With Van Els. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm so grateful to meet you. Thanks to Baptiste. It's awesome that we can meet and have this conversation. You love animals. We have horses here behind us, a baby horse, too. They're so, they're so beautiful. Oh, they're amazing. Oh. Yes, you, there is no word for it. Yeah. No, 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 no. And you fell in love with animals right from the beginning, but you didn't know quite where you fitted, right? Yeah. Tell us about this love for animals. And I know that now you're an animal healer and a communicator. And so I really want to speak about this healing and how this happens. I feel there's so many people with so many gifts out there. And it's time that we share these type of ideas and that we so that other people can recognize themselves and know that it is possible for their animals too. And it's just... It's, it's very, very important to me that uh, I interview people like you, that we share all this information out in the world so that we know that this is a magnificent earth and we're so talented and we have so much potential. Yes. And, and you, your story is very, very interesting because you went through a hard time. Tell us your, your love for animals and what you had to go through, through the chronic fatigue. Uh, in the beginning, when I was very young, I always had animals. It were hamsters, rabbits, cats, just all small animals. I took them everywhere. And when uh, my parents and my sisters and I were visiting people, I always looked around immediately. Where are the animals? Where I can put a rabbit? Or uh, The most of all I was interested in was doggy. And um, I always wanted a dog. And um, but my parents said it's a big responsibility, so no, not yet. And but finally, I got a dog too. And um, yeah, animals are my life. Yeah. It's just uh, it feels like it's such a different love than you get from people. It's unconditional, and uh, there's nothing in between. It's just they just are. Yeah. And um, when I was about 11, 12 years old, I've been through a very hard time with a serious chronic fatigue syndrome. So I was in bed for a year, all dark and no people around me. It was uh, too much for me. It, it's like you are so sick that you cannot handle the world around you. Mm. At that moment, I didn't know what it was exactly. Afterwards, I found out it's a, just a big spiritual journey and... Who am I? And letting go of a lot that is not important. And to finding out who I am and what, what I'm actually doing here. Mm -hmm. Because I had a plan. I always said I want to do something with animals. And people were like, oh, do you want to be a vet? Or do you want to work in a shelter? Do you want to walk dogs or with horses? I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to do? And I was like, something with animals. And that was my, it was like I made my own profession, you know, but yeah. I had no idea what that was going to be. And um, I love that, your own <laughs> profession. That's how it feels to me, too. And uh, this is this is exactly it. I feel like right now a lot of us are are, are waking up our our potential. And then all of a sudden we're, we're, we have to create that because it doesn't exist yet for this new earth. Yes. It is that uh, I first had to make a journey in myself. When you work so close with animals like I do, you need to be so, uh, yeah, present in yourself. You cannot have all kind of different things that are distracting you because how can you feel something that is so pure when you are completely like a mess, like I was with my illness? Then it's it's not possible and uh, so i went through the whole healing process physically mentally emotionally and big time spiritually and uh, so you're telling me you were writing yes i was the only thing the almost only thing i did when i was so sick was writing i needed to let go of my thoughts and now i understand it was a transformation process for me at that time i just thought i need to get rid of all these thoughts i have in me and the emotional and i cannot speak with people that's too exhausting so i need to write and that that saved me really mm. i wrote a book and about the chronic fatigue and everything and making it very vulnerable so people can really see what it's like but what you what the message is behind and that is helping other people with chronic fatigue to to understand they are not alone and it is not something you have to live with what a lot of doctors say you have to find a way to live with it but you can find your own true 
message in it. And then... So what did you learn then from the chronic fatigue? What was the message for you, the main one? Uh, for me, it was not going the regular way that I pointed out a little bit for myself. It was like going completely a different way that belongs to my soul and not to my body in this life, you know. And uh, it was... Um, When I look back now, I know it was about finding my purpose, my mission here, and that needed such a long time. And I say now I'm very glad for what it brought me, the disease. I'm not happy about all that happened, mm. but I'm happy about what what it gave me. It's mm. it's such a gift. And, and one day you're, you heard a voice? Yes. <laughs> I was... I was a big mess at that time. I tried so many things to heal, but uh, sometimes it worked a little bit and it didn't. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to do anymore. And I was lying on my bed and my dog, my gold retriever, Noah, was next to me on the bed and I just heard a voice. And I was like, oh my God, now I'm really uh, <laughs> driving mad. I was getting crazy. Yeah. And I said out loud, Who is this? Who's talking to me? Yeah, I'm lying here next to you on your bed and I talk to you every day and you finally hear me? Let's celebrate. And I was like, <gasps> and then I could only cry. I mean, I was first needed to overcome this big emotional because this dog meant everything to me. It, 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 yeah, it was the big unconditional love and he took me outside when I was actually too tired, but he connected me with people again after being so long in the house and um, then we had such big talks we I wanted to know everything I wanted to know how he felt uh, what I did wrong what I did well what I could improve in his life everything of course and uh, he had a heart disease a very very bad heart disease of course I went to the vet with him and they examined him and they said well six till nine months he has to he can still be here with you and then he will die it's, it's no exception it will happen and of course you are devastated then it was before he talked to me it was like a few weeks before and then i said to noah what is really going on with you is it just a heart disease or what is going on and He said, yes, I was born with this and it got worse and worse and worse. It's like elastic that is getting bigger and bigger. You can never make smaller again. And then he teached me to um, work on him. He teached me to make it stronger, to give it um, protection. To It was like when I, w when I worked with him at the moment, I could never think. I just... I was used as a vessel to do it for him. And he showed me every little piece. I could si draw his heart. And he said, then there and there and there, that is all blocked and there you can work. And it just happened. And then he lived for six more years. Can you imagine? Wow. It's... it's uh, Yeah, so he knew, he knew exactly. And he showed you how to, to heal him. You didn't know how he was. I mean, you didn't learn this in books, obviously. No, no. I knew the, uh, they made a uh, picture, of course, of his heart. They uh, showed me like this is, uh, it's just way too big. It can never keep him healthy. But he showed me every little detail. I mean, you can never know that. On pictures, you don't see that. Mm. So you were, you were... You were tell us about the process. Like you, you when you heal, mm -hmm. you were you were feeling it. Your, your hands move. You feel every detail, and 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 you're 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 totally guided. I mean, yes. And the, first, I start to really connect with the animal because you have to go very deep, and you need. We had a bond with each other. I mean, there was nothing between us, so that went easy that he could show me. He showed me images from here and here in the heart and so and so. And then he told me, just hold your hands like that, a special energy will come and it will go into my heart. And I had to like almost imagine that I did a surgery on him. Mm -hmm. It was with my thoughts, with my energy, with my guides guiding me. And it was 
a, uh, all together. Mm. In a holistic experience, yeah. Yes. And so, yes, not, uh, not yeah. with real cutting him yeah, open. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. And so, after that, you said, this is what I want to do, or? Um, you started I, tr trying to do this on, on uh, because I know here, I mean, we're around horses. I don't know if we can see them because they're moving, but... So, so, I mean, here there's this. Uh, she's 16, and she couldn't have uh, horses, and uh, and you helped her. What happened in that case? Uh, she was. Um, they tried to get her pregnant all the time, and inseminated her, and tried and tried, but it didn't work. But she had a huge block in her belly, and when we, w I worked on that, and I um, also took away emotions that were blocking her, and then she was pregnant. And then it's no, she's a happy horse. Yeah, she's a happy horse with a happy fall, you know. Yeah. W what else? I mean, it's so it's so intriguing. Yeah. It's so, it's not something that we hear every day, and I just uh, feel it. I mean, when you describe, it's like we're there. Yeah. Tell us of other operation, if we can call that, or healing, I should say, that happened that you'll remember. Yes, it was uh, when when this this happened with Noah. I needed a lot of time to process it because I was every time I did it, and then it was like I got awake and I was like, "Can I do that?" Oh, I was I cannot do that, but I did it. You know, I needed to work on my consciousness, on my own body to get stronger because when you do this, you need to be strong to carry the energies, and so I worked a lot on that. I didn't tell so many people because. I was afraid myself that they would say, oh, you cannot. Or, and I thought, I'm too vulnerable with this now. So I worked on getting myself stronger, working with the dogs of people. I knew they would believe in it. So I needed to, the faith to do it. And then it just happened. I mean, people came with uh, also uh, ho uh, dogs with heart problems. And mostly the people come to me with the animals that are... that nobody knows what is going on with them they get thyroid problems immune problems they don't eat anymore and then they try all kind of different things but it doesn't work because the energy is blocked yeah and the, and the normal medicine or the is not doesn't do anything it blocks it even further no a lot of times when something is with the immune system then they get like prednisone or something to uh, block it even more so that it can be more convenient for the animal, but it's of course not the answer. You uh, heal, if you work on the symptoms, but not on the cause. Yeah, it's like putting a band-aid on it. Yes. Mm. And so I have had many, several dogs in my practice that, for example, didn't eat. And when they don't eat for a few weeks, the owners get very concerned, of course. They try everything and they get also tensed about it. So when dogs come to me and I treat them, I get a message, okay, give him a cookie, now he will eat it. <laughs> so I say it to the owners, okay, I give him, oh, no, he won't eat it anyhow. Um, he he didn't eat for weeks. <laughs> and I say, of course, mm, here. So he eats. Then the owners give it, he doesn't eat. And then I train them also to be blank, neutral about it, caring and loving, and put the intention that I love you even if you don't eat it. It doesn't matter, you know, so... I work also on the relationship between dog and human. Mm -hmm. And then I treat the thyroid or the stomach or the immune system. And then they just start to eat because physically is not much going on. It's it is first on a spiritual level and energy pathways and everything, the meridians. And then when it's so long there, it will manifest in the body. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you have to and treat the spiritual part and the physical part. Mm -hmm. With my dog, I gave him also supplements and everything to support him. Mm -hmm. It's a combination of... But so many uh, animals I treated with cats who were like eating their own tail, you know, because they were the tail was not belonging to their body, they felt that. And cats need their tail, but so I could help the energy flow through. And then they felt, this is my tail, how can I bite it? And then they stop, you yeah. know. So, so would you say, would you confirm that uh, animals have soul and have a spiritual path? Oh, definitely. Yes. Yes, they have. Yeah. yeah. 
And and do they um, so 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 all those blockages? What are they due to? I mean, do you know by communicating with them? Do you know where this comes from for them and how they go through it and why this happens to them? Are they also like they have emissions? <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, animals who live very close to human beings, they often have the mission to mirror a lot back to us. Like when dogs have eating disorders, look at the owner and you see the same, you know. Or when dogs are barking a lot or are aggressive, then look at the owner, what they do. Are they like, you know, like that? Or are they like, ah. most of all, they are... Uh, struggling with themselves too not always they there can be a lot of causes for example animals cannot really pray when pray yeah <laughs> when they have um, sometimes when I'm connected I lose the words <laughs> when they have something it's good that you're connected <laughs> I like that <laughs> When they have something in their energy, like entities or something, they it's very hard for them to get rid of them. Yeah. So you have I have to be very careful when I connect with an animal. It's a complete different energy than I have. For for a moment, for a few months, maybe a year, I have been tuned in almost constantly with the animals, but my body is not made for that, you know. So I have to I had to learn to detach and at the same time attach more than ever mm -hmm. but from a from another level to hold yourself but when they have like entities in their energy uh, they need help to get it off mm -hmm. and and to to pray for them to clean their energy and there are so many different causes because also the animals live so close to us, they feel us, they feel our emotions. That is a big cause for problems in the animal. The food is uh, really important for the animals to get good food because they eat it a lot every day and it's the same for us. Mm -hmm. And we eat all shitty food with uh, all the additives and it's, n it's not healthy, it gives yeah. you stress. And it's for animals the same. What, um, by working with animals, what did you understood about human beings? And why we're here? Um, a lot. It was with every person you you learn so much with every animal. Animal. It's um, animals are not. They are just straight. They tell. They tell exactly what they see and what they feel. But they don't judge. And we take a lot personally. When our dog is not behaving, we take it personally because why is he uh, making a fool out of me? But that's not the reason the dog does it. We can learn. If I take it personal what my dog does, then I need to work on that, you know, and then the dog will change. Mm -hmm. That's a lot with behavior problems. And the closer you are to your animal, the more he or she mirrors back to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's very interesting if you're open for it. And very confronting also, yeah, yeah. can it be? Very, very interesting. And do you, and for human beings, uh, do you, why do you think we're here? I mean, you know why you're here, but there's a lot of people looking for their purpose. Some people might love animals too or something else. And uh, it, it's like, yeah, but she found it, not me, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. What would you like to tell them? Um, it's mostly what I find, f what I tell my clients too, because I work with human beings too, is um, accept the way for you. Accept where you are now and don't try to to go another person's pace because that will never work. You go when you can allow yourself just to be, you know, in the moment and with everything that is now around you then things will start to change but when you start when you try to go quicker or do nothing or do nothing is good but sometimes actions are needed to go to the next step mm -hmm. but we often that's that is just something human beings do we want to go faster they see oh she or he does that i want that too so i go do the same classes the same this but you have to listen to your feeling mm -hmm. We all have a unique path. We all have. Yeah. All all of us. Yeah. And for one is that uh, doing people's garden. What is amazing because nature is everything. I mean, if you 
uh, respect nature, I mean, that's that's a mission that you take care and that you clean up garbage on the street. I find that when I feel like I'm not completely connected, I go pick up garbage because that brings me back to nature. I I respect nature and animals so much that I, that you want to to serve them. Yeah. That's about it. Serve people and animals and nature and that is the energy you're in and you will attract that then you know and, and, and i feel too that we receive so much then help because you're being guided it's not really you doing it is it i'm not doing anything <laughs> but my uh, uh, th what my biggest challenge was was to allow them to guide me and not trying to do it myself yeah. i'm still sometimes like oh yeah like that and then They say, stop, not so fast, let it integrate. The integration is so important. Mm -hmm. When you do quickly, da, 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 then uh, it is too much. You can also give too much. Yeah. When you give too much light, they go to the light. It can even be dangerous, you know. Yeah. You need to know exactly so, this much, and then integration time, and then this. Sometimes you can give a lot, and sometimes it's only... And then human beings, of the... People are sometimes, is this all you do? But she has so many problems with my horse. Or say so yes, yeah. just wait, give it three weeks and then you'll see. Yeah. But I needed time to trust because in the beginning I thought, oh, I, give, I need to give massage and I need to give a little more because they pay for an hour and I worked only five minutes. That cannot be, you know, but that's the ego. Yeah. Just... Yeah. Beautiful. Well, I'm so grateful that I came all the way here in the middle of the farms and the countryside. And it, it, thank you. It's so it's so beautiful here. You have uh, just land, and uh, you know we're we always hear of Amsterdam and of um, then I'm going to Utrecht, but uh, and then here this is it could be in France too. It could be you know it's 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 just nature. It's just it's quiet. I love it. I love the city. I mean, I love the, all the people and I'm sitting on a terrace. But like this, it's like... This I start, precious. Yeah. Mm. Every morning I start with an hour walk in the forest with my dog just to, to be and to thank and just to walk, you know. Mm. My body is asking for just walk and move and let it be. Mm. Beautiful. Oh, and the little one is yeah. lying down. I had to zoom on them. They're so cute. Oh, oh well, my delicious co-creators, this is another juicy conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Els. Thank you. Thank you so much. Much, much love, my beautiful co-creators. Yes, also from me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Bye.